I am Viola Jordan. I'm senior program manager at University of Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership, CISL. Today, this webinar is a chance very much to share with you more about this program jointly launched uh, and run by CISL and BSI, British Standards Institution. You will also be able to ask questions about the program, the pilot, and learn a bit more about these two organizations. So I'm joined by uh, Wendy from BSI and Zoe from CISO Canopy. Welcome. Now, um, I think to start, perhaps I can uh, invite Zoe to share a bit more about CISO and Wendy to share a bit more about BSI in case this is the first time you come across with these two organizations. So Yasmin, if you could stop sharing and uh, Zoe, please go ahead. Thanks, Viola. Give me one sec. Let me just pull up a slide on CISL to uh, keep me on track. There we go. Hopefully you can all see that. So yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Zoe Lachlan. I'm a program manager within the Canopy team at CISL. Um, and really my focus is on our Canopy uh, community for startups and the workspace that we have here in Cambridge. But just to give you a very quick introduction to CISL, first of all, um, the University of Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership. We have been around for over 30 years now, and really we were one of the first organizations out there to look at the role and the impact of, of business in sustainability. Um, so over the last three decades, um, we've been working extensively across the business and corporate space in the finance, finance sector, um, and also um, with policymakers as well to really build sustainability leadership, understanding and, and push change towards a sustainable economy. Um, so the, the four kind of main ways that we do this, um, foresight, that first pillar that you can see there, um, we harness research and develop new ideas. Um, we, we put out a huge amount of thought leadership and convene different groups to sort of really um, push forward new thinking around sustainability. Um, we do a huge amount of work around our education, be that through our postgraduate level um, qualifications in, in sustainability leadership, through to our flagship programs um, for sort of C-suite um, and board level executives, um, as well as a sort of extensive range of online programs as well. Um, we do a lot of work around convening, bringing together different groups of governments, businesses, um, to really kind of uh, try and shape better policy and, and uh, um, change, establish new norms to, to, to make um, business more sustainable. Um, and I guess it's fair to say that we saw a sudden sort of change over the last five, 10 years. For a long time, we were having to do a lot of explaining why, why people needed to think about sustainability. And, and then it switched and everyone was coming to say to us and saying, we know, we know there's a problem. What do we do about it? And that's where this fourth pillar of innovation comes in. Um, and we embed innovation across all of the work we do at CISL. But three years ago, we launched our accelerator programs. So over the last three years, we've worked with more than 200 startups, um, helping them to really kind of accelerate their growth and development and, and embed these new innovative ideas um, and last year, we also launched the Canopy Workspace, which I will come back to um, to talk about um, in a bit more detail later on, I believe. Um, it's probably a good place to leave it. And I can hand over to Wendy to talk about BSI. Perfect. Wendy, Thank you. Over to you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Zoe, and thank you, Viola, as well. So um, I'm also going to do a little changeover with slides. So bear with me for one second, please. Can I just check that you're seeing the slides and seeing the right view of the slides as well, please? Oh, good, thank you. See, thumbs up, amazing. Um, so as Viola has already said, I work at BSI, the British Standards Institution, and I lead BSI Sustainability Innovation Lab in Cambridge. So I am now going to launch into, I'm afraid, a little bit of a monologue, especially for those of you who haven't come across BSI very much, and explain what we do, and in particular, what we're doing at the Sustainability Innovation Lab and why we are collaborating with CISL and Canopy for this particular program. And hopefully through some that background, it will give you a better sense of what it is we're looking for and what we are hoping to achieve by hopefully working with you all. 
So a bit of a background on BSI first and foremost. We'd like to think that with everything we do, what we're doing is being a trusted partner for organizations. And through working with us, we are helping those organizations to achieve their goals. That's really our aim, to kind of deliver progress and to help people achieve their goals. BSI itself is over 120 years old. And so we have this long history of playing this role as a partner for organizations and their progress. And for those of you who have heard about BSI, you're probably aware of our role as the UK's national standards body. I mean, that's the bit that's right in the name. And we were the first national standards body in the world. You yourself may, may have actually come across a standard or use it for your own work. You know, we like to think of standards as frameworks of best practice, kind of, you know, a view from the experts in the community on what good looks like in a particular area. So some of you may have used that to guide your own work, to kind of change your own processes, or maybe you've been audited against some of those standards. You may also have come across BSI through the kite mark, which um, you'll see on the bottom left of that slide on the symbols there. That is BSI's own symbol of quality and safety. And when you see that on a product or a service out in the world, what that means is we think of it as an sort of independent marker of trust. And when someone's looked at that product, looked at that service and said, you know, actually this reaches the level that's actually acceptable. And in order to do the work that we do, we really do that by bringing together a community of experts and leaders in different industries. And, and we see ourselves having this quite unique position really between the private sector, between different government bodies, and also between consumers and society. And our aim is to enable knowledge sharing across all of these different people, across industries, across sectors, and even across regions. Because I think, you know, I don't have to convince us, as Zoe's already said, the people on this call that, you know, we're all aiming to be more sustainable. That's such a big challenge for everybody right now. We're also undergoing this digital transformation, continually kind of changing the way we do things. And so we think that collaboration, that knowledge sharing, that drive towards progress is really, really important. And I started by kind of this explanation by laying out some of the high level aims of BSI, because we are very much a purpose led organization. That idea about aiming to be a partner for progress and as the slide says, you know, helping to shape a better future, that is really the North Star for everything that we do. BSI as an organization is incorporated by a Royal Charter, that again symbol you'll see, we're very proud of that, that's on the bottom left again. And the purpose we have as laid out in that Royal Charter really drives the work that we do and the direction that we go in. We are a profit for purpose company, and therefore we don't actually have shareholders. And it means that we reinvest all of our profits back into the work we're doing, back into enabling the aims and how we can partner with other people around the world. So I talked a lot about our aims of being this trusted partner for progress, our aim to kind of deliver trust between organizations, between government, between consumers. In order to do that, we actually offer a lot of different products and services. So I've talked about standards, audit, certifications already. We do a lot of different things across all of these different sectors. And rather than laying out a really long laundry list, just so you know what we're doing, I think it might be more useful to approach this from explaining how we aim to help our clients and the problems that we really want to solve for them. So we think that by working with us, what we're doing is giving them advice on industry best practices. You know, as I mentioned, you know, these standards, these certifications is really a framework explaining best practice and what good looks like. So we want to share that with our partners, with our clients, and help them with the processes that they need to achieve their goals. Another thing we do is to help provide forward views on regulatory requirements. So this is an idea, I guess, about future looking, not just what's happening today, but you know, particularly relevant for sustainability, I think, with the you know, pace at which things are changing. We want to help them to know what's coming up in advance as well, to monitor and track all of these different changes so that they can be future proofed and really continue to be moving forward as the world needs to do. And then finally, we provide data driven insights for their operational excellence. So this is really thinking about that digital transformation and thinking about how we can use data and digital technologies to deliver what we do today. So things like audits, not maybe once every year, every three years or somebody, you know, definitely having to come and look at everything you're doing. But can we use these tools to provide a more immersive experience, 
to provide a more automated and continuous experience as well, to be continuously monitoring what is happening there. And as with everything to do with data and digital technologies, to use that foundation and to do the analysis on top of it to provide people with the insights to help them make the decision thing to do to optimize what they're doing. And I'd like to think the through, the through line for all three of those different aims really is to do with the thing that I keep talking about, which is trust and best practice. By working with BSI, what our clients are saying is that they're demonstrating that they are someone, that there are people who really want to make progress towards their goals. That they're looking for help when they're actually doing the right things and they're actually really abiding by that best practice. And by demonstrating that to the world, we think that that builds trust with their own stakeholders and with their own customers. And as I mentioned before, we really do want to have this cross sector and cross region view as well. So we work across a range of different sectors with eight priority sectors in particular, built environment, energy, food and retail, government, healthcare, ICT, manufacturing and transport and mobility. And although we are called the British Standards Institution, we are very much a global company. So we work at, as it says, 128,000 sites in 182 countries. We have 80, over 84,000 clients ranging from really kind of global multinational companies all the way to smaller local businesses. And Having this cross-sector and cross-region view, I think, is particularly important because so many of us are impacted by global challenges and global drivers. I mean, sustainability, you know, obviously playing a huge role among that. And we think by existing in all of these areas and enabling that kind of knowledge sharing and best practice sharing, we can really be playing a huge role in delivering the solutions that's needed. And I, I quite like this quote from Susan Taylor Martin, our CEO. You know, as the financial, environmental and social climates of our climate continuously shift, BSI's founding purpose to benefit society is more relevant now than ever before. See, the idea about, you know, really delivering on our purpose continues to be at the heart of absolutely everything that we do. And sustainability, of course, is high on everybody's agenda. Don't need to convince you of that and the need that we're all kind of working towards the solutions. And so as BSI, we want to play our part in delivering those solutions and delivering the progress. And that requires, of course, expertise, that requires a lot of collaboration, and it also requires a lot of kind of creativity and future thinking. And hopefully that my little explanation before has gone some way towards convincing you that BSI can be a part of the change that's needed to deliver. And given sustainability is such a big challenge for so many of our clients, I have colleagues across BSI working on delivering products and services in sustainability from all kinds of different angles. And my team at the Sustainability Innovation Lab, of course, we are part of that mission. So our role within BSI, of course, what we want to do along with all of our colleagues is to bring that trust and best practice to the challenge of sustainability. And the way that we are doing it is really at that overlap between digital transformation and sustainability. So what we want to deliver at the lab are these digital tools that allow organizations to, to measure, to model, and to demonstrate their sustainability impacts. And ultimately, we want organizations to use those tools to make more sustainable decisions. So the idea about digital is really core to what we do. And kind of broadly, I would say we have three different I mean, principles. It's quite high-minded, maybe three different key ways that we are approaching the work that we do. First of all, is the idea about collaboration. We talked about it before, about bringing people together. But first, particularly, I think that idea of co-creation of solutions with the relevant people, whether it's clients or whether it's solution providers like yourself, is a really key thing because we want to get the expertise that everyone has to kind of build a much more holistic kind of stronger proposition. The other thing we want to do is to accelerate the adoption of these disruptive digital technologies. You know, we want to be partnering with organizations like yourselves, with anybody who thinks they have a solution and hopefully using the expertise in our networks and our kind of history, we can help to deliver that change at a faster pace that's, you know, that's actually what we need in the world, frankly. 
And then finally, as a sort of core guiding principle, we're all about experimentation. Delivering trust and best practice, there's so many different ways of doing it. Of course, BSI is already doing it. But we also want to consider how that might look in the future. And that requires experimentation, that requires risk taking. And that's what my team, in particular within BSI, is there to do. We're here as a part of BSI to tap into those networks, but to be a bit of a, like a sandbox environment really here, that we can kind of play and try new things out and learn from that. And to kind of work with, you know, to, with, hopefully with you, but also kind of with our stakeholders to design the kind of transfer, transformative solutions that's needed. So hopefully that explanation about BSI and particularly what we're doing here at the Sustainable Innovation Lab has given you a little bit of a background to the program and why we're doing it. Why, first of all, it's called trust in sustainability because that's such a North Star for us. Why it is, if you've read um, our website, why we're so focused on digital solutions and why piloting and testing these new solutions is such a large part of the program too. These are all three things that fit in the core of what we're trying to do here at the lab. And also, I hope that's given you some background about why we're so excited to work with CISL and the Canopy team to deliver this program. You know, above anything else, it's given me the, you know, the opportunity to speak in front of all of you, to get to know you and hopefully to work with you as part of this program, to kind of get a benefit from some of your press, fresh perspectives on how we can be tackling these challenges. And of course, you know, more importantly, to be testing and to developing the solutions to this area. And also, I think by combining the expertise and networks of CISL and also BSI on our kind of respective areas, we can provide this hopefully a very kind of well-rounded program that covers lots of different aspects. And we can be a partner for your own progress and hopefully can help you to grow your businesses too. So I am going to stop here. That's much too long for a monologue for me already. And um, I'll hand you back over to the other. Thank you, Wendy. And I think you lay out really well about you know, BSI's background and why you are doing this, as well as kind of give people a context of um, you know, what you are looking for. And so hopefully um, that it's kind of a slightly more clear, clearer uh, than the website to, uh, shared. But if you do have some more questions, please do feel free, just pop into the chat. We will try to answer as many as possible. And so for the time being, I'm just going to kind of uh, give you um, more onto the program. So when they already lay out of uh, why, why partner with CISO to, to deliver this program and what are they looking for and what's their vision um, wanting to do this and um, together with staffs. So from my side, I'm going to share kind of more details about uh, what program entails, but I think a lot of parts has been said. This is a 12 months long program, but we know staff founders, you are very busy. So we are not expecting you to you know, be tight with us in ways like a, a very intensive 12 months. We want to spread things across 12 months because we want to be there for you to support your journey, um, not just a sprint. Obviously sprint is great to get our things in a very short time, but as this is a development for a long-term impact. Uh, so it's a 12 months program. And it comes with a 12 months canopy membership. This is a really exciting part as well. And later, my colleague Zoe will share a bit more about what does that mean to be a canopy member. Then this program, obviously, you will have um, kind of two different parts, as already mentioned. The one first part is that acceleration side, and the second part is that pilot project. So in that acceleration side, you will have different workshops on business elements. And as CISO has been in sustainability space for over 30 years. So we also want to bring this sustainability knowledge to you for you to explore and as well as to you know, discover what else your innovation potentially could do to help transform the industry in, for good for sustainability. And as well, um, CISO's network, I think Zoe earlier shared, um, we have around 30,000 professionals in the world. We want to draw on those industry know-how into the program for you to have the opportunities to really engage with the industry players, knowing what's needed or what's you know lacking or anything in that space. And as a really exciting part, I think this is probably one of the selling points to you. And the reason you come onto this webinar is that pilot project. 
So I think Wendy already mentioned about how they would like to help and really help you to test it out. And I think this is also a very good opportunity to develop a case study. And imagine if you develop a case study with BSI. BSI is well known in the industry. So if you develop these type of case studies, it's really good also for your business development later on. And this program also comes with one-to-one -one mentoring support. So you will get a lot of support from these two organizations, BSI and CISO. So it's a, we are hoping it's a program that will add a lot of value to you. And next slide, please. So in the staff ecosystem, you probably be looking at all these people or organizations and why this program is great uh, value adding or why BSI and CISO is a great kind of, almost like your partner to work with you because CISO's kind of reach and BSI's reach, it reach to sort of all your stakeholders in this ecosystem. So we are not saying just work with us and don't work with anyone else. We say to achieve impact, you need to work collectively with every stakeholder possible. So we work with different accelerators as well, and we work with different corporate and policy makers and every, everyone in kind of a stakeholder ecosystem. And because of BSS work and CISO's work, you will have those opportunities when you have sessions, we carefully you know, designed and curated, then you will possibly have the opportunity to come across with these people um, in Cambridge, as well as uh, the sessions that we arranged, uh, if it's in person, that you will be able to potentially bump into someone from the policy side or different parts to really have this opportunity um, to have a conversation with them from the policy to investors, to you know, researchers in the Cambridge or as well, as well as a lot of co corporate. And I think this kind of people connections and resources are one of the strong suits in addition to you know, our sustainability knowledge as well as the program that we curate for you. So I think there's the next slide I will just quickly touch on and then I will invite Zoe to come in. So I think you always, as a founder, your time is limited. And then to select a program to, you know, kind of invest your time into it, you always look at what are the value? What are, what are you gaining uh, from a program? You don't, want, you don't want to just attend a program for it, the program's sake. But obviously it's a can be program, there's the credibility there. It's a BSI program, and those are kind of adding a lot of credibilities to your journey, particularly if you are really early stage, early stage. But then knowledge that will really help you to grow business, not just on the business side, because we work so much in a sustainability space with policymakers, finance institutions, and we kind of knowing kind of a lot of insights uh, from the parts, maybe not yet can skip down, so those knowledge, you will have those opportunity to kind of learn through the program or informally engaging with us. Then you also will have like-minded professional um, founders network um, in this community. And as I mentioned, you will be able to kind of develop a, a case study with credible corporates um, for your later on business development. If you are already in a selling part, then you know to have that case to sell, to say who is buying your digital solutions that will really help kind of accelerate your sales growth in that space. And obviously that with the program, there will be also demo day. So you will have a kind of a exposures to investors and there will be also kind of a, a social medias to help you to gain visibilities for your journey. And I guess to sum it up, the program value is very much you have the stakeholder and as well as that kind of community for life. It's 12 months, but after 12 months, you will also become the network of CISO and BSI, and that connection hopefully will help you a lot further. And on this point, um, I'm going to hand over to Zoe to tell you a little bit more about, we keep talking about Canopy, but now Zoe will be able to tell you what does Canopy means um, in, kind of, uh, in terms of uh, what value that can add. Such a perfect segue, um, because Canopy really first and foremost is a community. It is all about bringing together a community of like-minded startups. Um, and these are startups that come from different industries. They're, they're at different stages on their startup journey, but the one thing they all have in common is that they are um, impact-driven. They are looking to address a, a problem in sustainability. Um, 
and there is just so much value when you're in your own startup journey to, to coming together with other people that are going through that same process. Um, but as well as the community, um, the Canopy also offers a workspace. So when you join this program, you get access to our um, Central Cambridge workspace, um, which is based in the Intopia building. Um, so this is CISL's brand new headquarters in Central Cambridge. Um, it's a building that was originally a telephone exchange built in the 1930s. Um, we took it on a few years ago and set out to uh, undergo a really ambitious retrofit project um, as far as we're aware, no other project has set the bar quite so high in terms of the, the standards, both around sustainability, but also well-being standards. Um, so uh, the Entopia building is a really um, leading example of how you can take existing building stock and make it very, very sustainable. Um, it's also got circularity at its core. So wherever we could, we uh, kept... Um, repurposed existing things. Um, there's some really nice examples of this. So actually, let me just uh, share a couple of pictures as well to, to bring what I'm talking to to life. Give me one second. Um, share. Great. So um, so this is uh, the Entopia building in, in the middle of historic Cambridge. Um, and yeah, there's some some nice little examples. Um, so, for example, if the sort of circular economy in practice, wherever we could, um, we took stuff that was secondhand, we um, upcycled it, we reupholstered it. Um, my favorite example is that um, that steel frame there that you can see with the uh, the solar panels on. That was actually taken from the film set of one of the Marvels films, um, and we repurposed it uh, for our building. So it's it's a great space to be in. It's brand new. Um, it's uh, yeah, a really nice place to work. And and joining this program gives you access to that. And I think there's just so much benefit as well if you're a startup in the sustainability space, locating yourself somewhere that kind of lives and breathes those principles and those values. Um, there's a couple of. Uh, pictures here as well of the sort of space and action. So um, within the workspace, um, we obviously have have desks that you can access. There are meeting rooms. Um, there is a fourth floor um, boardroom, which is great for when you need to impress impl important clients. Um, and and the roof terrace, which is my personal favorite. I am looking forward to the summer coming up. It's our first summer with access to the roof terrace. And uh, yeah, it's it's just a great space to be in, surrounded by people that are passionate and driven by sustainability. As well as the Workspace Canopy um, offers its own program of events. So obviously through this um, BSI program, you will have bespoke support um, and learning, but also you can access the wider Canopy program of events. And this ranges from um, business support specific to startups um, through to wider events going on at CISL, industry specific events, and a huge number of just networking opportunities, be that across CISL's network or the wider university and Cambridge innovation ecosystem. Um, and yeah, just to, to recap, I think between Viola and I, we've covered a lot of it really, but for, first and foremost, Canopy is all about bringing together a community. It gives you the opportunity to really kind of come into CIS world, CISL's world, BSI's world and collaborate with us. Um, you get access to a huge amount of knowledge and thought leadership that is coming out of not just CISL, but also the wider university. Um, the event program offers a huge amount of support and you can access our wonderful workspace. And yeah, we're looking forward to bringing this cohort in to, to um, work alongside us and bring even more energy and buzz to what is already a very exciting space. Wonderful, thank you, Zoe. Um, so if there is any questions, please do feel free to put in the chat and we will try to answer it. But to kick off, probably I will just throw the questions um, and we, we can just answer because I think you might have questions about this already. So do you need to be based in Cambridge? Um, you, 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 wherever you, well, not wherever, like if we run programs, there are sessions set in person. We expect you attend in-person sessions in person. We know you are really busy, but we want to kind of strike a right balance between in-person engagement and virtual side of things. So for mentoring support, I think this is depending on the mentor and yourself, it's likely to be virtual because we can we will try our best to match um, businesses. 
for the mentor to to mentor. So the mentor may may not be based uh in the, in England and or or UK. So we will see what best suitable. But then there will be in person sessions. Um, you will not be. We try our best to kind of uh, schedule it in a way that is you come to Cambridge maybe two days a month. And then you get the in-person part all done. Obviously, you can come more and we welcome you because you also have the membership that to come and then just to sit with us and have informal coffees with, you know, people from a corporate or from different teams as well. Um, but part Maxima, uh, I think from the, for particularly for the first six months, we try our best to schedule Maxima like a two days in July because there's a kickoff, so there will be an additional day. Um, so otherwise, August is a summer holiday. We don't schedule anything in August, but uh, September until like kind of a February time, it's probably two days a month in Cambridge, and we try to like, schedule really like Monday, Tuesday. So you come, you stay over. And then once it's done, if you are happy to extend it, because there are a lot of things going on in Cambridge, you might want to, you know, kind of extend your stay if you are living a bit further, um, you, you can do so. So in terms of time-wise, it's that. And so I think there is a question about uh, to be eligible. Do we need to be incorporated in the UK? If I could get uh, Wendy to kind of give a little bit more information and context on this one, please. Of course. Um, I think the answer to that is no, you don't have to be incorporated in the UK. As an explained, PSI itself is a global company. So that's not really a problem for us. I think it's more of a, a kind of logistical and practical thing with the, as we all explained, there are some in-person days. It's really about being available for that. And after the kind of acceleration program in terms of piloting, um, we are looking you know, to have at least one contact day a month, but we'll hopefully to be in touch much more than that to kind of discuss the piloting and to you know, discuss that with each other and check in on progress and see how we're doing, but to at least you know, be together for one day a month is what we're looking for for this program. Yeah, thank you. And so I think there's uh, questions about um, events in London and workspace in London. So uh, Zoe, perhaps I can bring you to answer the particular workspace first. Sure, yeah. So we don't have um, workspace in London, not yet. Um, it's fair to say that um, we're just a short train ride away. So actually Cambridge is very accessible and I think there's so much benefit to um, connecting yourself to the Cambridge innovation ecosystem if you're London based. And certainly a lot of the people we've already worked with have, have sort of seen that there is, there's a lot of um, benefit of bringing those two ecosystems together. Um, we do have a lot of connections in the in the London kind of innovation space as well, um, which, you know, hopefully we can help to connect you into by being part of this program. Um, but the short answer is no to workspace in London. And then I think in terms of uh, events in London, um, as we go along, I think this is something BSI and CISO will be looking at particularly potentially um, how we engage with investors from kind of a London space or a different space, we will be looking at that. And so, yeah, there's no kind of definitely yes answers on that just yet, if uh, that makes sense. We also want to look at who we recruit. I think a lot of time you want to get more kind of bespoke support as well as you know sessions. So while there are sessions, it's already set in stone because we believe every business should kind of what needed but then we also have that flexibility so that we want to keep to know who who will be on the program who is the, on the cohort and then we are able to kind of find the if you are, if you are all kind of in a particular industry for example then we are able to kind of reach out to the industry experts or you know take people in that space or some so to bring in different kind of us uh, kind of speakers and so on and so I think there's a question about what sessions are included uh, during the accelerator programs. So I can give you kind of three pillars, if that makes sense. So one, it's very much on the sustainability side, because this is what CISO do. And with 30 years of experience, not that we don't have the publications, we also engage a lot with the industry. So there will be kind of learning blocks about sustainability, you know, system thinkings and how you kind of lead for impact or things like this but then obviously from the business element side um we are also kind of accelerator so you will still have the opportunities to go through you know your go to market strategy reviews and your revenue models and kind of your funding strategies and these type of things 
And then on the third side, obviously, uh, with working with BSI, a good thing is that we are able to bring the industry know-how. So we also want to have those you know, fireside charts as well as panel discussions to really bring those industry experts to this cohort for you to have those dialogue to learn about from their view, what do they see and what's the trend and so on and so forth. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more uh, information about what sessions will be included. And again, this is not 100% set in stone because we really want to get to know the business who will be on this program first. So we are able to kind of provide the support that's most needed. So for the next question, um, Chasura was asking, are there any specific commercial terms related to the pilot project and program? So if I could, uh, Wendy, to loop you in to answer this one, that would be great. Yeah, of course. Um, I have to admit, I, because the piloting is going to be so, we want to co-create that with you all and design it in a way that suits you and suits us as well. So it's going to be a case by case. So we don't have any specific kind of overarching commercial terms set out at this stage. I will say, though, I think because we are in the spirit of experimentation and piloting for this particular program, it's really that starting point for a collaboration. We want to see kind of, you know, see what we can learn from it. So everything I think is if we go into this mind and think about what come out of it, we're very open to kind of having those discussions. I think the only thing I would say that we have thought about a little bit more is to do with IP. And I would just say here that, you know, any kind of IP come into the program, we would not absolutely not claim to kind of have any ownership over that, as you might expect. It's really this idea about how can we be testing the things that you have developed in this context of trust and best practice. And then once we see something, if it has promise, then we'll go on and discuss, you know, we'll discuss terms kind of more specifically going on from there. I hope that's helpful. Bila, you're muted. Oh, well. um, so next questions, um, it's about very specific questions. So Wendy, if you could take on these questions. Yeah. Um, so the types of business, business and sustainability businesses that we are looking for. Um, I have to admit, I've somewhat deliberately not gone into detail on that because we want to be open to the thinking that you would be bringing to this. I think the thing we would say is, do you see your solution or your you know, service, your product, playing a role in this idea about trust and best practice and the piloting itself as well also as i you know explained i think that we'll be co-creating those use cases with you we we haven't come into this program saying we're looking to do xyz therefore we're looking for people to do all of these different things we actually come here with the spirit of kind of you know being creative about it together to think about what the future could look like. And so a the example over there about analytics and AI solutions to promote diversity and inclusion, you know, that idea about having monitoring and understanding social impacts within the workforce and also how we can, you know, help people to make better decisions. That is definitely something to think about. I would say that you know, as part of the program very early on. So in July, you might be able to see on the website, there's a thing we're calling the hack day in, in July. And the idea for that is that at the very start of the program, we want to take a day with you or with the people on the program to ideate, to think creatively about what it is. What is this use case and trust and best practice that we'll be building with you? Because that's a starting point of defining what the pilot is. Now, for some of you, that might be incredibly easy to say what that is. You can already see it. Maybe for something else, we're actually kind of looking a little bit sideways. We'd be excited to do that. And so once we have a better understanding, I think, of what it is we're aiming for, then we are defining the pilot and what we do on the pilot according to that. So what are some of the, we, you know, through the next few months, we'll be looking to define, you know, what are some of the answers, questions that we're trying to answer? What are some of these hypotheses that we want to test in the pilot? And then we'd be kind of matching you with situations to answer those questions. So it might be, for example, with one of our clients, that might be the way we choose to test it. It could be with BSI itself. We are an organization like any other. So we face the same challenges everyone else does. And also, of course, you probably know there are some specific organization space places that are kind of designating themselves to be test beds for some of these. So depending on your solution, depending on where we see the trust and best practice use case, we're designing that pilot together. So we are open to these new ideas across the breadth of sustainability. Right. That does um so when we were pre preparing the web copies for, for you. Um, stuff and um, it was really hard to, to create a right balance to give you a sense of what we are looking for but we also don't want to limit or narrow it down because we believe 
as uh, innovators like yourself, there must be something else we couldn't think of, but then you are doing it and you it matches really well and that you can really get support from this program. So please do uh, reach out to us if you are not sure, send us the one pager um, to say, this is my business, does that fit? You know, do, do feel free to get in touch in this way as well. So there are two questions about um, whether we take equities or do we make investments? So I would say we don't make investments um, through this program. And in terms of equities, for the program itself, we don't take equities. Um, but if, um, obviously, if you entering later on entering kind of a commercial agreement separately with BSI, then that's a, a separate uh, discussions for, for you and BSI to have. From CSO's perspective, we do not um, take equities because we are part of the University of Cambridge um, and Cambridge have Cambridge Enterprise that is kind of investing in Cambridge spin outs. But CISO, our luxury is that we don't need to, we don't have the restrictions only work with Cambridge spin outs. So I think this is where we see ourselves really bringing Cambridge's resources and, you know, kind of network and possible support to impact staff and founders. So I'm going to go down to the um, next questions. So there's a question about um, FCA Impact Investment Cloud Funding Platforms to be launched in partnership. So your specific question is, is the opportunity open to financial services staffs and disruptors? So Wendy, if um, you want to jump in on this one. Yes. Um, Simon, I would say it's a little bit difficult without knowing the specifics, I think, of what you're doing, but I would say as a kind of general, um, I guess, rule of thumb is that we are actually doing some work, BSI, internally in terms of investment and sustainability. So that is an area that we are doing work in, so it doesn't rule it out. I think um, it's hard to be specific on your particular opportunity, I think, without understanding it, but I would say in theory, yes. Right, thank you. So uh, Rola's question, there is no cost for you to join the program. If you are selected, it's entirely free. But I just to say there are in-person sessions that you need to make your own way to Cambridge. So that's your kind of a business cost. Um, you have to cover it for yourself. But all the program sessions and um, kind of is covered and funded by BSI. And so there are emails in the chat, canopy at ciso.cam.ac.uk. If you have other questions after this um, webinar, feel free to reach out. We'll try our best um, to um, answer those questions. So there's a next question. What is the level an idea should have reached to be accepted in a program? So considering there is a piloting in you know, after the first six months, and we will be matching you for the first six months. That is a, the, kind of a, the very important part of the program. So if you are a really early, just ideas kind of um, stage, I would say you probably unlikely in six months time, you will be have the solution to go into the pilot. So that's kind of how you judge it. If you already start, you know, kind of build a solution is nearly kind of there to ready for that pilot, then that's kind of a stage in general, how we judge it. And um, I hope, hope that makes sense to you. Then, um, so next steps. So now it's open for application. Um, the web page link, if my colleague can just put in the chat again, we are open for application already and please, Please do, I do encourage everyone, uh, don't wait for the deadline. I know everyone has this thing like waiting for the last minute and then put in the applications. We have opened the uh, early application, uh, early application interview period. So if your application is in, if we we will be reviewing it already, we will not wait. So we will be reviewing already. And if we feel like it seems like a good fit, we will schedule an interview during the kind of a early application interview period. So you will also get a sense of whether you're likely to be selected or not, and as well as to kind of engage with them for a bit further discussions. So please um, yeah, do if you feel like this sounds like a great opportunity for you, um, put in your applications today if you can. Um, please do send us the supporting document um, for the university's uh, system. You have to send the documents, uh, supporting documents separately. Um, but please do send send us everything for us to review. That will kind of help us to know a bit more, understand a bit more about your solution. That would be wonderful. 
Right, we are 45 minutes. I wonder if there's any more questions from our live audience. If so, we still happy to answer. And if not, um, then we will also kind of just close the webinar a bit sooner. Is that the first time you are doing the program? Um, so we have been running a third program since November 2019. We have run 10, 11, 12 uh, sustainability themed um, accelerator programs already. So three and a half years time. And how much businesses will be select? Um, so we aim to select between five to seven businesses. It will be a small cohort because there's a lot of resources that is going into this to support it kind of a different uh, each businesses to grow. So up to seven businesses. And who are your mentors and coaches? So our mentors and coaches, and please feel free to jump in Zoe and Wendy because otherwise I'll just uh, answering questions that I, I, I know answers there. <laughs> um, so mentors and coaches, we will be very much, you can imagine is our network. So CISO's network as well as BSI's network. We don't want to just assign you whoever. We want to actually know what do you need as a staff founders. We have enough people in our network. We can always reach out to the right one um, for you, obviously, depending on what exactly you need. But we believe the best way of matching is that knowing what are your challenges? What do you actually need? We don't want to just match you with, okay, this is your business coach. This is your you know industry mentor. because. If you already have a lot you know, resources, I'm sure all of you already have lost resources from other accelerator or from your personal network. So we want to be that kind of one to fit in the gap for you. So, but there will be people in the industry, people in the um, innovation ecosystems, and it will be very much from our network mostly. Right. I will see if, um, uh, Wendy, if, do you have anything that you want to add here? And as well, Zoe, do you have anything you want to add before um, we close the session? I'm just buying a little bit of time to see if there's more questions coming up. I think I feel like we've summed things up pretty well. I guess just back to that question about if it's our first program. And so, um, like Viola said, it's it's absolutely not. We've um, we've delivered a lot of uh, programs working with more than two hundred startups and some in, well, all of them incredible. So many kind of rewards and achievements um, have come. Uh, we we just constantly see new um, achievements and successes. But I guess what is unique about this program is it is the first time it's been a year long program and it's the first one that has um, included sort of bringing people into the workspace too. Um, so it's it feels very special. It's uh, um, just the fact that we will get that face to face time um, in the building as well. Um, it's yeah a really exciting one to be launching now. Yeah. And I think for the pilot part, we're really. I think it's something really exciting and really hope that we will be able to follow, you know, kind of your journeys and as well as to help you share your success um, as, as we go along. I think there's another question um, about do we have a similarly broad network for the matching to cooperate in the pilot program session? Um, if I think this question is probably for you, Wendy. You are thinking I'm going to take that. Um, I guess the answer is yes, although I wouldn't quite think of it as a network quite so much. I think, as I said, you know, in terms of designing that pilot and making sure we're answering the right questions in the right way, we would be using all of our resources and the links that we have to do that. It is probably, you know, our client base, but as I said, BSI is an organization. We are also very lucky internally to have a sustainability operations team who are very open to as their favorite phrase is drinking our own champagne. They want to really showcase ours, our own work as a way to do this. So we're very open to doing that as well. That could also be a case study for you. And like I said, there are also some tests. That. So, so it really does depend on what challenge you're trying to kind of you know, answer really with the pilot. Fantastic. Right, I think that this is probably um, the moment for us to close this webinar. And thank you very much all for joining live. And if you are watching uh, this recording, um, feel free uh, still also to reach out to us and the email will be canopy or uh, at CIS, well, sorry, ciso.cam.ac.uk. I know because uh, if you are watching this, you won't be able to see the links or kind of text in the chat function. 
and or reach out through uh, accelerator at ciso cam.ac.uk these two emails feel free to reach out to us um otherwise on our web page um please do submit your application thank you very much everyone thank you everyone Bye.